Before we get into the video today, YouTube hasn't been sending out notifications to those of you who rang the notification bell. So I created a mailing list that will send out weekly updates for all SciGet content. Check the link in the comments and description to sign up. And be sure to check your spam folder or promotions tab to confirm your email address. This is the Centaurus A radio galaxy, originally discovered in 1826 by a Scottish astronomer named James Dunlop in South Wales, Australia, and located in the constellation Centaurus. This galaxy has been the center of a debate surrounding its exact properties. And at the center of that debate is its supermassive black hole, which emits incredible relativistic jets of material that are responsible for the X-ray and radio emissions that give Centaurus A its designation. In the past, astronomers have found it impossible to observe the supermassive black hole at the center of this incredible galaxy. But thanks to the Event Horizon Telescope and new technology, that has changed. Yes, we now have the most detailed images of a relativistic jet ever, and we're going to talk about them. But first, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. The supermassive black hole at the center of the Centaurus A radio galaxy has 55 million times the mass of our sun. That's 55 million solar masses. Astronomers, over the course of a decade of radio observations focused on the galaxy's relativistic jets, determined that the inner parts of the jet are moving at 50% the speed of light and travel an incredible distance of 10 to 16 light years. Centaurus A is the fifth brightest galaxy in the night sky and is one of the closest radio galaxies to Earth. Its active galactic nucleus, or AGN, has been extensively studied by the scientific community. But sadly, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you won't be able to see it because it's only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. Despite knowing how fast and how far the jets are traveling, it's still a mystery why and how they're formed, or how any black hole produces emissions at all for that matter. Scientists have wanted to make observations of Centaurus A's AGN, but because of its small size, such observations, like the ones we've been able to conduct on our own galaxy's AGN, have been impossible. Until now. The Event Horizon Telescope is pretty awesome. Y'all should know this image pretty well. It's the first ever image taken of a black hole featuring the supermassive black hole known as Messier 87, also known as Virgo A or NGC 4486, at the center of a giant elliptical galaxy in the constellation Virgo. This black hole is one of the most powerful known sources of radio emissions and energy, which says a lot because we've cataloged thousands of galaxies in the Virgo cluster. Since that amazing first image, the Event Horizon Telescope has been hard at work refining the data that they receive from not only M87, but also other supermassive black holes like the one at the center of our own galaxy and the Centaurus A radio galaxy, which has a radius that would be as small as an apple if it were to be placed between us and the moon. That's right, Centaurus A is getting the M87 treatment. But what can we expect from that? Well, I guess we'll have to look at some of the advancements that have been made since that first image of M87. The Event Horizon Telescope and Collaboration has been hard at work studying M87, and their efforts have revealed some interesting things about how magnetic fields work in supermassive black holes. At first glance at this new image of Messier 87, you might think that it's not that much different, until you notice the bands rotating around the black hole's shadow. Those bands, or I guess spiral formations, are the result of the EHT using polarized light to view the black hole suggesting some interesting properties in the black hole's magnetic field. Compared to unpolarized light, polarized light waves have a different brightness and orientation. Light is polarized when it passes through a pair of sunglasses, but light is also polarized when it's emitted in extremely hot and magnetized parts of space. What this told the Event Horizon Telescope team is that the emissions in the ring are most certainly produced by magnetic fields that are located very close to the event horizon. These observations are key to learning how the gases near the black hole behave, and in turn, how their incredible emissions are generated, which is exactly what the EHT team hopes to uncover about Centaurus A. They also produced this awesome time-lapse animation of M87 based off their observations. While the EHD is still working on imaging the central supermassive black hole in the Centaurus A radio galaxy, they did just make history by generating the most detailed images ever produced of the emissions produced by that black hole. These images capture the incredible jets launched at relativistic speeds from the center of the Centaurus A galactic core. Now, these might not look like much, 
But to put them in perspective, they feature a resolution that is 16 times sharper than what was previously possible, along with an accuracy that is 10 times better than any images ever taken of AGN relativistic jets. As we described earlier in the video, the Centaurus A emissions travel an incredible distance of 10 to 16 light years. The scale of these images offer a much closer look at them, orders of magnitude closer in fact. But don't take my word for it. Astronomer Michael Janssen of the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy in Germany and Radboud University in the Netherlands had this to say about the monumental images. This allows us for the first time to see and study an extragalactic radio jet on scales smaller than the distance light travels in one day. We see up close and personal how a monstrously gigantic jet launched by a supermassive black hole is being born. A single light day is equal to 2.590 times 10 to the 10th power kilometers. This is an incredible distance that is hard to imagine. But for reference, Pluto rests at a position equal to 3.0961 billion miles away from the Earth, or 39.5 astronomical units. Light takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us here on Earth, and one astronomical unit is equal to the distance from the Sun to the Earth. If light takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds to travel 1 AU, then it will take 323.9 minutes to travel 39.5 AU to reach Pluto. But how far does it travel in 24 hours? Well, with some basic math, we get a result equal to about 175.609 AU in 24 hours. That's a little further than where the termination shock and heliopause are, the boundary between what's considered interstellar space that the Voyager probes passed through a while back. Beyond that is the Oort cloud, which extends about 100,000 AU from the Sun. So each of these images represents about the distance between the Sun and Voyager 2, which sits at a distance equal to 123 AU plus about 50 AU, give or take. Remember when we compared the supermassive black hole's radius to an apple? Well, if we were observing the black hole in front of the Moon from Earth, the team says that the emissions would be 16 times wider than the Moon. Aren't cosmic objects fun? In terms of radio wavelengths, the Centaurus A galaxy is one of the largest objects in the night sky. That's because when comparing it to Sagittarius A star, our own supermassive black hole, it behaves very, very differently. For starters, it produces a lot more energy. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that every relativistic jet that has ever been observed, even remnants like the Fermi bubbles, end up traveling distances that eclipse the size of the galaxy. They usually outshine the galaxy that produced them, too. But how they manage to accelerate to near relativistic speeds, hence the name and all, is a total mystery, and one that the EHT team is determined to unravel. The new images taken of Centaurus A's relativistic jets were originally captured during the period in 2017 when the EHT was observing the M87 galaxy. In case we haven't mentioned it before, the Event Horizon Telescope brings together eight radio telescopes that effectively combine their power to create a telescope that's about equal to the size of the Earth. Some parts of the jets further out are much brighter than those emitted closer to the galactic core. This is something that has been observed before the EHT snapped these images, but the processes that lead to that particular phenomenon are a complete mystery. Koshik Chatterjee, a study co-author and researcher at the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard and the Smithsonian, says, Theoretically, jets can collide with galactic gas and heat up the edge, but the details of such a process so close to the black hole are a complete mystery. The brightness contrast between the center and the edge could potentially provide us with new insights about the plasma physics both within and around jets, making Centaurus A an exciting target for next-generation black hole simulations. While the team is still examining the data that led to the generation of these images, they're also hard at work producing the first images and direct observations of Centaurus A's central black hole. When that happens, the team is hoping that it will shed some light on the mechanics that allow for these incredible relativistic jets. <laughs> Get it? Because black holes swallow. What? If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below. How cool are these images? Makes me wonder what other massive objects they could image like this. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.